In mathematics and computer science, an algorithm listen is a set of instructions, typically to solve a class of problems or perform a computation. Algorithms are unambiguous specifications for performing calculation, data processing, automated reasoning, and other tasks. As an effective method, an algorithm can be expressed within a finite amount of space and time and in a well-defined formal language for calculating a function. Starting from an initial state and initial input perhaps empty, the instructions describe a computation that, when executed, proceeds through a finite number of well-defined successive states, eventually producing output and terminating at a final ending state. The transition from one state to the next is not necessarily deterministic. Some algorithms, known as randomized algorithms, incorporate random input. The concept of algorithm has existed for centuries. Greek mathematicians used algorithms in the sieve of Eratosthenes for finding prime numbers, and the Euclidean algorithm for finding the greatest common divisor of two numbers. The word algorithm itself is derived from the 9th century mathematician Muhammad ibn Musa al Khwarizmi, Latinized algorithmi. A partial formalization of what would become the modern concept of algorithm began with attempts to solve the Entscheidungsproblem decision problem posed by David Hilbert in 1928. Later formalizations were framed as attempts to define effective calculability or effective method. Those formalizations included the gödel herbrand clean recursive functions of 1930, 1934 and 1935, Alonzo Church's lambda calculus of 1936, Emil Post's formulation 1 of 1936, and Alan Turing's Turing machines of 1936, 37 and 1939. Topic. Etymology The word algorithm has its roots in Latinizing the name of Muhammad ibn Musa al-Khwarizmi in a first step to algorithmus. Al-Khwarizmi Arabic, Al-Khwarizmi Persian, Khwarizmi c. 780-850 was a Persian mathematician, astronomer, geographer, and scholar in the House of Wisdom in Baghdad, whose name means the native of Khwarizma, a region that was part of Greater Iran and is now in Uzbekistan. About 825, Al-Khwarizmi wrote an Arabic-language treatise on the Hindu-Arabic numeral system, which was translated into Latin during the 12th century under the title Algorithmi de numero indorum. This title means, algorithmi on the numbers of the Indians, where, algorithmi, was the translator's Latinization of al khwarizmis name. al khwarizmi was the most widely read mathematician in Europe in the late Middle Ages, primarily through another of his books, The Algebra. In late medieval Latin, algorithmus, English algorithm, the corruption of his name, simply meant the decimal number system. In the 15th century, under the influence of the Greek word arithmos number cf, arithmetic, the Latin word was altered to algorithmus, and the corresponding English term algorithm is first attested in the 17th century. The modern sense was introduced in the 19th century. In English, it was first used in about 1230 and then by Chaucer in 1391. English adopted the French term, but it wasn't until the late 19th century that algorithm took on the meaning that it has in modern English. Another early use of the word is from 1240, in a manual titled Carmen de Algorismo composed by Alexander de Vildieu. It begins thus, HAEC algorithmus ARS presens dissiter, in qua, talibus indorum fruimer bis quinque figuris, which translates as, Algorithm is the art by which at present we use those Indian figures, which number two times five. The poem is a few hundred lines long and summarizes the art of calculating with the new style of Indian dice, or talibus indorum, or Hindu numerals. Topic informal definition An informal definition could be a set of rules that precisely defines a sequence of operations, which would include all computer programs, including programs that do not perform numeric calculations, and, for example, any prescribed bureaucratic procedure. Generally, a program is only an algorithm if it stops eventually. A prototypical example of an algorithm is the Euclidean algorithm to determine the maximum common divisor of two integers. An example, there are others, is described by the flowchart above and as an example in a later section. 
Boulos, Jeffrey and 1974, 1999 offer an informal meaning of the word in the following quotation, no human being can write fast enough, or long enough, or small enough, smaller and smaller without limit, you'd be trying to write on molecules, on atoms, on electrons to list all members of an innumerably infinite set by writing out their names, one after another, in some notation. But humans can do something equally useful, in the case of certain innumerably infinite sets, they can give explicit instructions for determining the nth member of the set, for arbitrary finite n. Such instructions are to be given quite explicitly, in a form in which they could be followed by a computing machine, or by a human who is capable of carrying out only very elementary operations on symbols. An innumerably infinite set is one whose elements can be put into one-to-one -one correspondence with the integers. Thus, Boulos and Jeffrey are saying that an algorithm implies instructions for a process that creates output integers from an arbitrary input integer or integers that, in theory, can be arbitrarily large. Thus an algorithm can be an algebraic equation such as y equals m plus n, two arbitrary input variables m and n that produce an output y. But various authors' attempts to define the notion indicate that the word implies much more than this, something on the order of, for the addition example, precise instructions in language understood by the computer for a fast, efficient, good process that specifies the moves of the computer, machine or human, equipped with the necessary internally contained information and capabilities to find, decode, and then process arbitrary input integers, symbols m and n, symbols plus n, equals, and, effectively, produce, in a, reasonable, time, output integer y at a specified place and in a specified format, the concept of algorithm is also used to define the notion of decidability. That notion is central for explaining how formal systems come into being starting from a small set of axioms and rules. In logic, the time that an algorithm requires to complete cannot be measured, as it is not apparently related to our customary physical dimension. From such uncertainties, that characterize ongoing work, stems the unavailability of a definition of algorithm that suits both concrete in some sense and abstract usage of the term. Equals. Topic. Formalization Equals. Algorithms are essential to the way computers process data. Many computer programs contain algorithms that detail the specific instructions a computer should perform in a specific order to carry out a specified task, such as calculating employees' paychecks or printing students' report cards. Thus, an algorithm can be considered to be any sequence of operations that can be simulated by a Turing complete system. Authors who assert this thesis include Minsky, 1967, Savage, 1987, and Gurevich, 2000. Minsky, but we will also maintain, with Turing, that any procedure which could naturally be called effective can, in fact, be realized by a simple machine. Although this may seem extreme, the arguments in its favor are hard to refute. Gurevich Turing's informal argument in favor of his thesis justifies a stronger thesis, every algorithm can be simulated by a Turing machine. According to Savage 1987, an algorithm is a computational process defined by a Turing machine. Typically, when an algorithm is associated with processing information, data can be read from an input source, written to an output device and stored for further processing. Stored data are regarded as part of the internal state of the entity performing the algorithm. In practice, the state is stored in one or more data structures. For some such computational process, the algorithm must be rigorously defined, specified in the way it applies in all possible circumstances that could arise. That is, any conditional steps must be systematically dealt with, case by case, the criteria for each case must be clear and computable. Because an algorithm is a precise list of precise steps, the order of computation is always crucial to the functioning of the algorithm. Instructions are usually assumed to be listed explicitly, and are described as starting from the top, 
and going down to the bottom, an idea that is described more formally by flow of control. So far, this discussion of the formalization of an algorithm has assumed the premises of imperative programming. This is the most common conception, and it attempts to describe a task in discrete, mechanical, means. Unique to this conception of formalized algorithms is the assignment operation, setting the value of a variable. It derives from the intuition of memory as a scratchpad. There is an example below of such an assignment. For some alternate conceptions of what constitutes an algorithm see functional programming and logic programming. Topic. Expressing algorithms Algorithms can be expressed in many kinds of notation, including natural languages, pseudocode, flowcharts, dracon charts, programming languages or control tables processed by interpreters. Natural language expressions of algorithms tend to be verbose and ambiguous, and are rarely used for complex or technical algorithms. Pseudocode, flowcharts, dracon charts and control tables are structured ways to express algorithms that avoid many of the ambiguities common in natural language statements. Programming languages are primarily intended for expressing algorithms in a form that can be executed by a computer but are often used as a way to define or document algorithms. There is a wide variety of representations possible and one can express a given Turing machine program as a sequence of machine tables see more at finite state machine, state transition table and control table, as flowcharts and dracon charts see more at state diagram, or as a form of rudimentary machine code or assembly code called sets of quadruples, see more at Turing machine. Representations of algorithms can be classed into three accepted levels of Turing machine description. One high-level description. Pros to describe an algorithm, ignoring the implementation details. At this level, we do not need to mention how the machine manages its tape or head. Two implementation description. Pros used to define the way the Turing machine uses its head and the way that it stores data on its tape. At this level, we do not give details of states or transition function. Three formal description. Most detailed. Lowest level. Gives the Turing machine's. State table. For an example of the simple algorithm. Add M plus N. Described in all three levels, see algorithm hashtag examples. Topic. Design Algorithm design refers to a method or mathematical process for problem solving and engineering algorithms. The design of algorithms is part of many solution theories of operation research, such as dynamic programming and divide and conquer. Techniques for designing and implementing algorithm designs are also called algorithm design patterns, such as the template method pattern and decorator pattern. One of the most important aspects of algorithm design is creating an algorithm that has an efficient runtime, also known as its big O. Typical steps in the development of algorithms Problem definition Development of a model Specification of the algorithm Designing an algorithm Checking the correctness of the algorithm Analysis of algorithm Implementation of algorithm Program testing Documentation preparation Topic. Implementation Most algorithms are intended to be implemented as computer programs. However, algorithms are also implemented by other means, such as in a biological neural network for example, the human brain implementing arithmetic or an insect looking for food, in an electrical circuit, or in a mechanical device. Topic. Computer algorithms In computer systems, an algorithm is basically an instance of logic written in software by software developers, to be effective for the intended target computers to produce output from given perhaps null input. 
An optimal algorithm, even running in old hardware, would produce faster results than a non-optimal higher time complexity algorithm for the same purpose, running in more efficient hardware, that is why algorithms, like computer hardware, are considered technology. Elegant. Compact. Programs. Good. Fast. Programs. The notion of. Simplicity and elegance. Appears informally in Newth and precisely in Chaitin. Newth. We want good algorithms in some loosely defined aesthetic sense. One criterion is the length of time taken to perform the algorithm. Other criteria are adaptability of the algorithm to computers, its simplicity and elegance, etc. Chaitin. A program is elegant, by which I mean that it's the smallest possible program for producing the output that it does. Chaitin prefaces his definition with, I'll show you can't prove that a program is elegant. Such a proof would solve the halting problem, Ibid. Algorithm versus function computable by an algorithm, for a given function multiple algorithms may exist. This is true, even without expanding the available instruction set available to the programmer. Rogers observes that it is important to distinguish between the notion of algorithm, i.e. procedure and the notion of function computable by algorithm, i.e. mapping yielded by procedure. The same function may have several different algorithms. Unfortunately, there may be a trade-off between goodness speed and elegance compactness. An elegant program may take more steps to complete a computation than one less elegant. An example that uses Euclid's algorithm appears below. Computers and computers, models of computation, a computer or human computer is a restricted type of machine, a discrete deterministic mechanical device that blindly follows its instructions. Melzack's and Lambeck's primitive models reduced this notion to four elements, i discrete, distinguishable locations, e discrete, indistinguishable counters, e an agent, and iv a list of instructions that are effective relative to the capability of the agent. Minsky describes a more congenial variation of Lambeck's abacus model in his very simple basis for computability. Minsky's machine proceeds sequentially through its five or six, depending on how one counts instructions, unless either a conditional if-then go-to or an unconditional go-to changes program flow out of sequence. Besides halt, Minsky's machine includes three assignment replacement, substitution, operations, zero, e.g. The contents of location replaced by zero, L0, successor, e.g. LL plus one, and decrement, e.g. LL minus one. Rarely must a programmer write code with such a limited instruction set. But Minsky shows, as do Melzack and Lambeck, that his machine is Turing complete with only four general types of instructions, conditional go-to, unconditional go-to, assignment, replacement, substitution, and halt. However, a few different assignment instructions e.g. decrement, increment, and zero, clear, empty for a Minsky machine are also required for Turing completeness, their exact specification is somewhat up to the designer. The unconditional go-to is a convenience, it can be constructed by initializing a dedicated location to zero e.g. the instruction Z0. Thereafter the instruction if Z equals zero then go to XXX is unconditional. Simulation of an algorithm, computer, computer, language, Newth advises the reader that the best way to learn an algorithm is to try it, immediately take pen and paper and work through an example. But what about a simulation or execution of the real thing? The programmer must translate the algorithm into a language that the simulator, computer, computer can effectively execute. Stone gives an example of this, when computing the roots of a quadratic equation the computer must know how to take a square root. If they don't, then the algorithm, to be effective, must provide a set of rules for extracting a square root, this means that the programmer must know a language that is effective relative to the target computing agent computer, computer. But what model should be used for the simulation? Van Emd Boas observes. Even if we base complexity theory on abstract instead of concrete machines, arbitrariness of the choice of a model remains. 
It is at this point that the notion of simulation enters. When speed is being measured, the instruction set matters. For example, the subprogram in Euclid's algorithm to compute the remainder would execute much faster if the programmer had a modulus instruction available rather than just subtraction or worse, just Minsky's decrement. Structured programming, canonical structures, per the Church-Turing thesis, any algorithm can be computed by a model known to be Turing-complete, and per Minsky's demonstrations, Turing-completeness requires only four instruction types. Conditional go-to, unconditional go-to, assignment, halt. Kemeny and Kurtz observe that, while undisciplined, use of unconditional GOTOs and conditional if-then GOTOs can result in spaghetti code. A programmer can write structured programs using only these instructions. On the other hand, it is also possible, and not too hard, to write badly structured programs in a structured language. Tauswarth augments the three bohm jacopini canonical structures, sequence, if-then-else, and while-do, with two more, do-while and case. An additional benefit of a structured program is that it lends itself to proofs of correctness using mathematical induction. Canonical flowchart symbols, the graphical aid called a flowchart, offers a way to describe and document an algorithm and a computer program of one. Like the program flow of a Minsky machine, a flowchart always starts at the top of a page and proceeds down. Its primary symbols are only four, the directed arrow showing program flow, the rectangle sequence, go-to, the diamond if-then-else, and the dot or tie. The bohm jacopini canonical structures are made of these primitive shapes. Substructures can nest in rectangles, but only if a single exit occurs from the superstructure. The symbols, and their use to build the canonical structures are shown in the diagram. Topic. Examples Topic. Algorithm example One of the simplest algorithms is to find the largest number in a list of numbers of random order. Finding the solution requires looking at every number in the list. From this follows a simple algorithm, which can be stated in a high-level description in English prose, as High-level description If there are no numbers in the set then there is no highest number. Assume the first number in the set is the largest number in the set. For each remaining number in the set, if this number is larger than the current largest number, consider this number to be the largest number in the set. When there are no numbers left in the set to iterate over, consider the current largest number to be the largest number of the set. Quasi formal description Written in prose but much closer to the high-level language of a computer program, the following is the more formal coding of the algorithm in pseudocode or pidgin code. Topic. Euclid's algorithm Euclid's algorithm to compute the greatest common divisor GCD to two numbers appears as Proposition 2 in Book 7, Elementary Number Theory, of his elements. Euclid poses the problem thus. Given two numbers not prime to one another, to find their greatest common measure. He defines a number to be a multitude composed of units. A counting number, a positive integer not including zero. Two measure is to place a shorter measuring length s successively q times along longer length l until the remaining portion r is less than the shorter length s in modern words remainder r equals l minus q times s q being the quotient or remainder r as the modulus the integer fractional part left over after the division for euclid's method to succeed the starting lengths must satisfy two requirements i the lengths must not be zero and e the subtraction must be proper i.e a test must guarantee that the smaller of the two numbers is subtracted from the larger alternately the two can be equal so their subtraction yields zero euclid's original proof adds a third requirement the two lengths must not be prime to one another Euclid stipulated this so that he could construct a reductio ad absurdum proof that the two numbers common measure is in fact the greatest. 
While Nicomachus's algorithm is the same as Euclid's, when the numbers are prime to one another, it yields the number 1 for their common measure. So, to be precise, the following is really Nicomachus's algorithm. Topic. Computer language for Euclid's algorithm Only a few instruction types are required to execute Euclid's algorithm. Some logical tests conditional go-to, unconditional go-to, assignment, replacement, and subtraction. A location is symbolized by uppercase letters, e.g. S, A, etc. The varying quantity number in a location is written in lower case letters and usually associated with the location's name. For example, location L at the start might contain the number L. Equals 3009. Equals. Topic. An inelegant program for Euclid's algorithm. Equals. The following algorithm is framed as Knut's four-step version of Euclid's and Nicomachus's, but, rather than using division to find the remainder, it uses successive subtractions of the shorter length s from the remaining length r until r is less than s. The high-level description, shown in boldface, is adapted from Knuth 1973 to 2-4. Input 1 into two locations L and S put the numbers L and S that represent the two lengths. Input L, S, 2, initialize R, make the remaining length R equal to the starting, initial, input length L, R L, E0, ensure R S, 3, ensure the smaller of the two numbers is in S and the larger in R, if R greater than S then, the contents of L is the larger number so skip over the exchange steps 4, 5 and 6, go to step 6, else, Swap the contents of R and S. For LR, this first step is redundant, but is useful for later discussion. 5RS 6SL E1, find remainder, until the remaining length R in R is less than the shorter length S in S, repeatedly subtract the measuring number S in S from the remaining length R in R. 7 if S greater than R then. Done measuring so. Go to 10 else measure again 8 r r minus s 9 remainder loop go to 7 e2 is the remainder 0 either i the last measure was exact the remainder in r is 0 and the program can halt o r e the algorithm must continue the last measure left a remainder in r less than measuring number in s 10 if r equals 0 then done so Go to step 15, else, continue to step 11, E3, interchange S and R, the nut of Euclid's algorithm. Use remainder R to measure what was previously smaller number S, L serves as a temporary location. 11 LR, 12 RS, 13 SL, 14, repeat the measuring process, go to 7, output, 15, done. S contains the greatest common divisor. Print S. Done. 16 halt, end, stop. Topic. An elegant program for Euclid's algorithm. The following version of Euclid's algorithm requires only six core instructions to do what 13 are required to do by inelegant. Worse, inelegant requires more types of instructions. The flowchart of elegant can be found at the top of this article. In the unstructured basic language, the steps are numbered, and the instruction let equals is the assignment instruction symbolized by how elegant works in place of an outer Euclid loop. Elegant shifts back and forth between two co-loops. An A greater than B loop that computes A A minus B, and A B a loop that computes B B minus A. 
This works because, when at last the minuend m is less than or equal to the subtrahend s difference equals minuend minus subtrahend, the minuend can become s the new measuring length and the subtrahend can become the new r the length to be measured, in other words the sense of the subtraction reverses. The following version can be used with object-oriented languages. Topic. Testing the Euclid algorithms Does an algorithm do what its author wants it to do? A few test cases usually give some confidence in the core functionality. But tests are not enough. For test cases, one source uses 3009 and 884. Newth suggested 40,902, 24,140. Another interesting case is the two relatively prime numbers 14,157 and 5,950. But, exceptional cases, must be identified and tested. Will, an elegant, perform properly when R greater than S, S greater than R, R. Topic. S. Ditto for. Elegant. B greater than A, A greater than B, A. B. Yes to all. What happens when one number is zero, both numbers are zero? An elegant. Computes forever in all cases. Elegant. Computes forever when A equals zero. What happens if negative numbers are entered? Fractional numbers? If the input numbers, i.e. the domain of the function computed by the algorithm, program, is to include only positive integers including zero, then the failures at zero indicate that the algorithm and the program that instantiates it is a partial function rather than a total function. A notable failure due to exceptions is the Ariane 5 Flight 501 rocket failure June 4, 1996. Proof of program correctness by use of mathematical induction, Newth demonstrates the application of mathematical induction to an extended version of Euclid's algorithm, and he proposes a general method applicable to proving the validity of any algorithm. Tauswarth proposes that a measure of the complexity of a program be the length of its correctness proof. Topic. Measuring and improving the Euclid algorithms Elegance compactness versus goodness speed, with only six core instructions. Elegant is the clear winner, compared to unelegant at 13 instructions. However, unelegant is faster, it arrives at halt in fewer steps. Algorithm analysis indicates why this is the case. Elegant does two conditional tests in every subtraction loop, whereas an elegant only does one. As the algorithm usually requires many loop throughs, on average much time is wasted doing a b equals zero test that is needed only after the remainder is computed. Can the algorithms be improved once the programmer judges a program fit and effective? That is, it computes the function intended by its author. Then the question becomes, can it be improved? The compactness of an elegant can be improved by the elimination of five steps. But Chaitin proved that compacting an algorithm cannot be automated by a generalized algorithm, rather, it can only be done heuristically, i.e., by exhaustive search examples to be found at Busy Beaver, trial and error, cleverness, insight, application of inductive reasoning, etc. Observe that steps 4, 5 and 6 are repeated in steps 11, 12 and 13. Comparison with elegant provides a hint that these steps, together with steps 2 and 3, can be eliminated. This reduces the number of core instructions from 13 to 8, which makes it more elegant than elegant at 9 steps. The speed of elegant can be improved by moving the b equals 0. Test outside of the two subtraction loops. This change calls for the addition of three instructions B. Topic 0, A. 0, go to. Now. Elegant. 
computes the example numbers faster, whether this is always the case for any given A, B, and R, S would require a detailed analysis. Topic. Algorithmic analysis It is frequently important to know how much of a particular resource such as time or storage is theoretically required for a given algorithm. Methods have been developed for the analysis of algorithms to obtain such quantitative answers estimates, for example, the sorting algorithm above has a time requirement of O n, using the big O notation with n as the length of the list. At all times the algorithm only needs to remember two values, the largest number found so far, and its current position in the input list. Therefore, it is said to have a space requirement of O 1, if the space required to store the input numbers is not counted, or O n, if it is counted. Different algorithms may complete the same task with a different set of instructions in less or more time, space, or effort than others. For example, a binary search algorithm with cost O log N outperforms a sequential search cost O N when used for table lookups on sorted lists or arrays. Topic: Formal versus empirical. The analysis and study of algorithms is a discipline of computer science and is often practiced abstractly without the use of a specific programming language or implementation. In this sense, algorithm analysis resembles other mathematical disciplines in that it focuses on the underlying properties of the algorithm and not on the specifics of any particular implementation. Usually, pseudocode is used for analysis as it is the simplest and most general representation. However, ultimately, most algorithms are usually implemented on particular hardware, software platforms and their algorithmic efficiency is eventually put to the test using real code. For the solution of a one-off problem, the efficiency of a particular algorithm may not have significant consequences unless n is extremely large, but for algorithms designed for fast interactive, commercial or long-life scientific usage it may be critical. Scaling from small n to large n frequently exposes inefficient algorithms that are otherwise benign. Empirical testing is useful because it may uncover unexpected interactions that affect performance. Benchmarks may be used to compare before, after potential improvements to an algorithm after program optimization. Empirical tests cannot replace formal analysis, though, and are not trivial to perform in a fair manner. Topic. Execution efficiency To illustrate the potential improvements possible even in well-established algorithms, a recent significant innovation, relating to FFT algorithms used heavily in the field of image processing, can decrease processing time up to 1,000 times for applications like medical imaging. In general, speed improvements depend on special properties of the problem, which are very common in practical applications. Speedups of this magnitude enable computing devices that make extensive use of image processing like digital cameras and medical equipment to consume less power. Topic. Classification There are various ways to classify algorithms, each with its own merits. Topic. By implementation One way to classify algorithms is by implementation means. Recursion A recursive algorithm is one that invokes makes reference to itself repeatedly until a certain condition also known as termination condition matches, which is a method common to functional programming. Iterative algorithms use repetitive constructs like loops and sometimes additional data structures like stacks to solve the given problems. Some problems are naturally suited for one implementation or the other. For example, Towers of Hanoi is well understood using recursive implementation. Every recursive version has an equivalent but possibly more or less complex iterative version, and vice versa. Logical an algorithm may be viewed as controlled logical deduction. This notion may be expressed as, algorithm equals logic plus control. 
The logic component expresses the axioms that may be used in the computation and the control component determines the way in which deduction is applied to the axioms. This is the basis for the logic programming paradigm. In pure logic programming languages, the control component is fixed and algorithms are specified by supplying only the logic component. The appeal of this approach is the elegant semantics, a change in the axioms produces a well-defined change in the algorithm. Serial, parallel or distributed Algorithms are usually discussed with the assumption that computers execute one instruction of an algorithm at a time. Those computers are sometimes called serial computers. An algorithm designed for such an environment is called a serial algorithm, as opposed to parallel algorithms or distributed algorithms. Parallel algorithms take advantage of computer architectures where several processors can work on a problem at the same time, whereas distributed algorithms utilize multiple machines connected with a computer network. Parallel or distributed algorithms divide the problem into more symmetrical or asymmetrical subproblems and collect the results back together. The resource consumption in such algorithms is not only processor cycles on each processor but also the communication overhead between the processors. Some sorting algorithms can be parallelized efficiently, but their communication overhead is expensive. Iterative algorithms are generally parallelizable. Some problems have no parallel algorithms and are called inherently serial problems. Deterministic or non-deterministic Deterministic algorithms solve the problem with exact decision at every step of the algorithm whereas non-deterministic algorithms solve problems via guessing although typical guesses are made more accurate through the use of heuristics. Exact or approximate while many algorithms reach an exact solution, approximation algorithms seek an approximation that is closer to the true solution. The approximation can be reached by either using a deterministic or a random strategy. Such algorithms have practical value for many hard problems. One of the examples of an approximate algorithm is the knapsack problem, where there is a set of given items. Its goal is to pack the knapsack to get the maximum total value. Each item has some weight and some value. Total weight that can be carried is no more than some fixed number x so, the solution must consider weights of items as well as their value. Quantum algorithm They run on a realistic model of quantum computation. The term is usually used for those algorithms which seem inherently quantum, or use some essential feature of quantum computing such as quantum superposition or quantum entanglement. Topic. By design paradigm Another way of classifying algorithms is by their design methodology or paradigm. There is a certain number of paradigms, each different from the other. Furthermore, each of these categories includes many different types of algorithms. Some common paradigms are Brute force or exhaustive search this is the naive method of trying every possible solution to see which is best. Divide and conquer A divide and conquer algorithm repeatedly reduces an instance of a problem to one or more smaller instances of the same problem usually recursively until the instances are small enough to solve easily. One such example of divide and conquer is merge sorting. Sorting can be done on each segment of data after dividing data into segments and sorting of entire data can be obtained in the conquer phase by merging the segments. A simpler variant of divide and conquer is called a decrease and conquer algorithm, that solves an identical subproblem and uses the solution of this subproblem to solve the bigger problem. Divide and conquer divides the problem into multiple subproblems and so the conquer stage is more complex than decrease and conquer algorithms. An example of a decrease and conquer algorithm is the binary search algorithm. Search and enumeration Many problems, such as playing chess, can be modeled as problems on graphs. A graph exploration algorithm specifies rules for moving around a graph and is useful for such problems. This category also includes search algorithms, branch and bound enumeration and backtracking. Randomized algorithm such algorithms make some choices randomly, or pseudo-randomly. 
They can be very useful in finding approximate solutions for problems where finding exact solutions can be impractical see heuristic method below. For some of these problems, it is known that the fastest approximations must involve some randomness. Whether randomized algorithms with polynomial time complexity can be the fastest algorithms for some problems is an open question known as the P versus NP problem. There are two large classes of such algorithms. Monte Carlo algorithms return a correct answer with high probability. EGRP is the subclass of these that run in polynomial time. Las Vegas algorithms always return the correct answer, but their running time is only probabilistically bound, e.g. ZPP, reduction of complexity. This technique involves solving a difficult problem by transforming it into a better known problem for which we have, hopefully, asymptotically optimal algorithms. The goal is to find a reducing algorithm whose complexity is not dominated by the resulting reduced algorithms. For example, one selection algorithm for finding the median in an unsorted list involves first sorting the list the expensive portion and then pulling out the middle element in the sorted list the cheap portion. This technique is also known as transform and conquer. Backtracking In this approach, multiple solutions are built incrementally and abandoned when it is determined that they cannot lead to a valid full solution. Topic. Optimization problems For optimization problems there is a more specific classification of algorithms. An algorithm for such problems may fall into one or more of the general categories described above as well as into one of the following. Linear programming when searching for optimal solutions to a linear function bound to linear equality and inequality constraints, the constraints of the problem can be used directly in producing the optimal solutions. There are algorithms that can solve any problem in this category, such as the popular simplex algorithm. Problems that can be solved with linear programming include the maximum flow problem for directed graphs. If a problem additionally requires that one or more of the unknowns must be an integer then it is classified in integer programming. A linear programming algorithm can solve such a problem if it can be proved that all restrictions for integer values are superficial, i.e., the solutions satisfy these restrictions anyway. In the general case, a specialized algorithm or an algorithm that finds approximate solutions is used, depending on the difficulty of the problem. Dynamic programming When a problem shows optimal substructures, meaning the optimal solution to a problem can be constructed from optimal solutions to subproblems, and overlapping subproblems, meaning the same subproblems are used to solve many different problem instances, a quicker approach called dynamic programming avoids recomputing solutions that have already been computed. For example, floyd warshall algorithm, the shortest path to a goal from a vertex in a weighted graph can be found by using the shortest path to the goal from all adjacent vertices. Dynamic programming and memoization go together. The main difference between dynamic programming and divide and conquer is that subproblems are more or less independent in divide and conquer, whereas subproblems overlap in dynamic programming. The difference between dynamic programming and straightforward recursion is in caching or memoization of recursive calls. When subproblems are independent and there is no repetition, memoization does not help, hence dynamic programming is not a solution for all complex problems. By using memoization or maintaining a table of subproblems already solved, dynamic programming reduces the exponential nature of many problems to polynomial complexity. The greedy method a greedy algorithm is similar to a dynamic programming algorithm in that it works by examining substructures, in this case not of the problem but of a given solution. Such algorithms start with some solution, which may be given or have been constructed in some way, and improve it by making small modifications. For some problems they can find the optimal solution while for others they stop at local optima, that is, at solutions that cannot be improved by the algorithm but are not optimum. The most popular use of greedy algorithms is for finding the minimal spanning tree where finding the optimal solution is possible with this method. Huffman tree, Kruskal, Prim, Solon are greedy algorithms that can solve this optimization problem. The heuristic method 
In optimization problems, heuristic algorithms can be used to find a solution close to the optimal solution in cases where finding the optimal solution is impractical. These algorithms work by getting closer and closer to the optimal solution as they progress. In principle, if run for an infinite amount of time, they will find the optimal solution. Their merit is that they can find a solution very close to the optimal solution in a relatively short time. Such algorithms include local search, taboo search, simulated annealing, and genetic algorithms. Some of them, like simulated annealing, are non-deterministic algorithms while others, like taboo search, are deterministic. When a bound on the error of the non-optimal solution is known, the algorithm is further categorized as an approximation algorithm. Topic. By field of study. Every field of science has its own problems and needs efficient algorithms. Related problems in one field are often studied together. Some example classes are search algorithms, sorting algorithms, merge algorithms, numerical algorithms, graph algorithms, string algorithms, computational geometric algorithms, combinatorial algorithms, medical algorithms, machine learning, cryptography, data compression algorithms and parsing techniques. Fields tend to overlap with each other, and algorithm advances in one field may improve those of other, sometimes completely unrelated, fields. For example, dynamic programming was invented for optimization of resource consumption in industry but is now used in solving a broad range of problems in many fields. Topic. By complexity. Algorithms can be classified by the amount of time they need to complete compared to their input size. Constant time, if the time needed by the algorithm is the same, regardless of the input size. E.g. an access to an array element. Linear time, if the time is proportional to the input size. E.g. the traverse of a list. Logarithmic time, if the time is a logarithmic function of the input size e.g. binary search algorithm. Polynomial time, if the time is a power of the input size. e.g. the bubble sort algorithm has quadratic time complexity. Exponential time, if the time is an exponential function of the input size. e.g. brute force search, some problems may have multiple algorithms of differing complexity, while other problems might have no algorithms or no known efficient algorithms. There are also mappings from some problems to other problems. Owing to this, it was found to be more suitable to classify the problems themselves instead of the algorithms into equivalence classes based on the complexity of the best possible algorithms for them. Topic. Continuous algorithms The adjective continuous when applied to the word algorithm can mean an algorithm operating on data that represents continuous quantities even though this data is represented by discrete approximations such algorithms are studied in numerical analysis or an algorithm in the form of a differential equation that operates continuously on the data running on an analog computer topic legal issues Algorithms, by themselves, are not usually patentable. In the United States, a claim consisting solely of simple manipulations of abstract concepts, numbers, or signals does not constitute processes, USPTO 2006, and hence algorithms are not patentable, as in Gotchik v. Benson. However practical applications of algorithms are sometimes patentable. For example, in Diamond v. Deere, the application of a simple feedback algorithm to aid in the curing of synthetic rubber was deemed patentable. The patenting of software is highly controversial, and there are highly criticized patents involving algorithms, especially data compression algorithms, such as Unisys LZW patent. Additionally, some cryptographic algorithms have export restrictions see export of cryptography. Topic. History, development of the notion of algorithm <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Ancient Near East. Algorithms were used in ancient Greece. Two examples are the sieve of Eratosthenes, which was described in Introduction to Arithmetic by Nicomachus, and the Euclidean algorithm, which was first described in Euclid's Elements c. 300 BC. Babylonian clay tablets describe and employ algorithmic procedures to compute the time and place of significant astronomical events. Topic. Discrete and distinguishable symbols Tally marks, to keep track of their flocks, their sacks of grain and their money The ancients used tallying, accumulating stones or marks scratched on sticks or making discrete symbols in clay. Through the Babylonian and Egyptian use of marks and symbols, eventually Roman numerals and the abacus evolved Dilson, p. 16-41. Tally marks appear prominently in unary numeral system arithmetic used in Turing machine and post-Turing machine computations. Topic. Manipulation of symbols as placeholders for numbers, algebra. The work of the ancient Greek geometers Euclidean algorithm, the Indian mathematician Brahmagupta, and the Persian mathematician Al-Khwarizmi from whose name the terms algorithm and algorithm are derived, and Western European mathematicians culminated in Leibniz's notion of the calculus ratiocinator CA 1680. A good century and a half ahead of his time, Leibniz proposed an algebra of logic, an algebra that would specify the rules for manipulating logical concepts in the manner that ordinary algebra specifies the rules for manipulating numbers. Topic. Mechanical contrivances with discrete states The clock, Bolter credits the invention of the weight-driven clock as the key invention of Europe in the Middle Ages. In particular, the verge escapement that provides us with the tick and talk of a mechanical clock, the accurate automatic machine, led immediately to mechanical automata, beginning in the 13th century and finally to computational machines. The difference engine and analytical engines of Charles Babbage and Countess Ada Lovelace, mid-19th century. Lovelace is credited with the first creation of an algorithm intended for processing on a computer. Babbage's analytical engine, the first device considered a real Turing complete computer instead of just a calculator, and is sometimes called history's first programmer. As a result, though a full implementation of Babbage's second device would not be realized until decades after her lifetime. Logical Machines 1870 Stanley Jevons, Logical Abacus, and Logical Machine. The technical problem was to reduce Boolean equations when presented in a form similar to what is now known as Carnot maps. Jevons 1880 describes first a simple abacus of Slips of wood furnished with pins, contrived so that any part or class of the logical combinations can be picked out mechanically. More recently, however, I have reduced the system to a completely mechanical form, and have thus embodied the whole of the indirect process of inference in what may be called a logical machine. His machine came equipped with certain movable wooden rods and at the foot are 21 keys like those of a piano, etc. With this machine he could analyze a syllogism or any other simple logical argument. This machine he displayed in 1870 before the Fellows of the Royal Society. Another logician John Venn, however, in his 1881 Symbolic Logic, turned a jaundiced eye to this effort. I have no high estimate myself of the interest or importance of what are sometimes called logical machines. It does not seem to me that any contrivances at present known or likely to be discovered really deserve the name of logical machines. See more at algorithm characterizations. But not to be outdone he too presented. A plan somewhat analogous, I apprehend, to Professor. Javon's abacus and, again, corresponding to Professor Jevons's logical machine, the following contrivance may be described. 
I prefer to call it merely a logical diagram machine. But I suppose that it could do very completely all that can be rationally expected of any logical machine. Jacquard Loom, Hollerith Punch Cards, Telegraphy and Telephony, The Electromechanical Relay, Bell and Newell 1971, indicate that the Jacquard Loom 1801, precursor to Hollerith Cards, Punch Cards, 1887, and Telephone Switching Technologies, were the roots of a tree leading to the development of the first computers. By the mid-19th century the telegraph, the precursor of the telephone, was in use throughout the world, its discrete and distinguishable encoding of letters as dots and dashes, a common sound. By the late 19th century the ticker tape CA 1870s was in use, as was the use of Hollerith cards in the 1890 U.S. Census. Then came the teleprinter CA 1910 with its punched paper use of Bado code on tape. Telephone switching networks of electromechanical relays invented 1835 was behind the work of George Stibitz 1937, the inventor of the digital adding device. As he worked in Bell Laboratories, he observed the burdensome use of mechanical calculators with gears. He went home one evening in 1937 intending to test his idea. When the tinkering was over, Stibitz had constructed a binary adding device. Davis 2000 observes the particular importance of the electromechanical relay with its two binary states open and closed. It was only with the development, beginning in the 1930s, of electromechanical calculators using electrical relays, that machines were built having the scope Babbage had envisioned. Topic. Mathematics during the 19th century up to the mid-20th century Symbols and rules, in rapid succession, the mathematics of George Boole 1847, 1854, Gottlob Frege 1879, and Giuseppe Pino 1888 to 1889 reduced arithmetic to a sequence of symbols manipulated by rules. Pino's The Principles of Arithmetic, presented by a new method 1888, was the first attempt at an axiomatization of mathematics in a symbolic language. But Hyenort gives Frege 1879, this kudos, Frege is as perhaps the most important single work ever written in logic in which we see a formula language, that is a lingua characterica, a language written with special symbols for pure thought, that is, free from rhetorical embellishments, constructed from specific symbols that are manipulated according to definite rules. The work of Frege was further simplified and amplified by Alfred North Whitehead and Bertrand Russell in their Principia Mathematica 1910-1913. The paradoxes, at the same time a number of disturbing paradoxes appeared in the literature, in particular, the Barali 40 paradox 1897, the Russell paradox 1902-03, and the Richard paradox. The resultant considerations led to Kurt Gödel's paper 1931. He specifically cites the paradox of the liar that completely reduces rules of recursion to numbers. Effective calculability, in an effort to solve the Entscheidungsproblem defined precisely by Hilbert in 1928, mathematicians first set about to define what was meant by an effective method, or effective calculation, or effective calculability, i.e., a calculation that would succeed. In rapid succession the following appeared, Alonzo Church, Stephen Kleen and J.B. Rosser's Lambda Calculus a finely honed definition of general recursion. From the work of Gödel acting on suggestions of Jacques Herbrand C.F. Gödel's Princeton Lectures of 1934 and subsequent simplifications by Kleene. Church's proof that the Entscheidungsproblem was unsolvable, Emile Post's definition of effective calculability as a worker mindlessly following a list of instructions to move left or right through a sequence of rooms and while there either mark or erase a paper or observe the paper and make a yes-no decision about the next instruction. Alan Turing's proof of that the Entscheidungsproblem was unsolvable by use of his a automatic machine. In effect almost identical to Post's formulation. J. Barclay Rosser's definition of effective method in terms of a machine. 
S.C. Clean's proposal of a precursor to church thesis that he called thesis I, and a few years later Clean's renaming his thesis Church's Thesis and proposing Turing's Thesis. Topic. Emil Post 1936 and Alan Turing 1936-37, 1939 Emil Post 1936 described the actions of a computer human being as follows Dot two concepts are involved, that of a symbol space in which the work leading from problem to answer is to be carried out, and a fixed unalterable set of directions, his symbol space would be a two-way infinite sequence of spaces or boxes. The problem solver or worker is to move and work in this symbol space, being capable of being in, and operating in but one box at a time. A box is to admit of but two possible conditions, i.e., being empty or unmarked, and having a single mark in it, say a vertical stroke. One box is to be singled out and called the starting point. A specific problem is to be given in symbolic form by a finite number of boxes, i.e., input, being marked with a stroke. Likewise, the answer, i.e., output, is to be given in symbolic form by such a configuration of marked boxes. A set of directions applicable to a general problem sets up a deterministic process when applied to each specific problem. This process terminates only when it comes to the direction of type C, i.e., stop. See more at Post-Turing Machine. Alan Turing's work preceded that of Stibitz, 1937. It is unknown whether Stibitz knew of the work of Turing. Turing's biographer believed that Turing's use of a typewriter-like model derived from a youthful interest. Alan had dreamt of inventing typewriters as a boy, Mrs. Turing had a typewriter, and he could well have begun by asking himself what was meant by calling a typewriter mechanical. Given the prevalence of Morse code and telegraphy, ticker tape machines, and teletypewriters we might conjecture that all were influences. Turing his model of computation is now called a Turing machine, begins, as did Post, with an analysis of a human computer that he whittles down to a simple set of basic motions and states of mind. But he continues a step further and creates a machine as a model of computation of numbers. Computing is normally done by writing certain symbols on paper. We may suppose this paper is divided into squares like a child's arithmetic book, one assume then that the computation is carried out on one-dimensional paper, i.e., on a tape divided into squares. I shall also suppose that the number of symbols which may be printed is finite. The behavior of the computer at any moment is determined by the symbols which he is observing, and his state of mind at that moment. We may suppose that there is a bound B to the number of symbols or squares which the computer can observe at one moment. If he wishes to observe more, he must use successive observations. We will also suppose that the number of states of mind which need be taken into account is finite. Let us imagine that the operations performed by the computer to be split up into simple operations which are so elementary that it is not easy to imagine them further divided. Turing's reduction yields the following. The simple operations must therefore include a changes of the symbol on one of the observed squares. b changes of one of the squares observed to another square within L squares of one of the previously observed squares. It may be that some of these change necessarily invoke a change of state of mind. The most general single operation must, therefore, be taken to be one of the following. A, a possible change a, of symbol together with a possible change of state of mind. B a possible change B of observed squares, together with a possible change of state of mind. We may now construct a machine to do the work of this computer. A few years later, Turing expanded his analysis, thesis, definition with this forceful expression of it. A function is said to be 
effectively calculable if its values can be found by some purely mechanical process. Though it is fairly easy to get an intuitive grasp of this idea, it is nevertheless desirable to have some more definite, mathematical expressible definition. He discusses the history of the definition pretty much as presented above with respect to Gödel, Herbrand, Kleene, Church, Turing, and Post. We may take this statement literally, understanding by a purely mechanical process one which could be carried out by a machine. It is possible to give a mathematical description, in a certain normal form, of the structures of these machines. The development of these ideas leads to the author's definition of a computable function, and to an identification of computability with effective calculability. We shall use the expression computable function to mean a function calculable by a machine, and we let effectively calculable refer to the intuitive idea without particular identification with any one of these definitions. Topic. J. B. Rosser, 1939, and S. C. Clean, 1943. J. Barclay Rosser defined an effective mathematical method in the following manner, italicization added. Effective method is used here in the rather special sense of a method each step of which is precisely determined and which is certain to produce the answer in a finite number of steps. With this special meaning, three different precise definitions have been given to date. His footnote number 5, see discussion immediately below. The simplest of these to state due to Post and Turing says essentially that an effective method of solving certain sets of problems exists if one can build a machine which will then solve any problem of the set with no human intervention beyond inserting the question and later reading the answer. All three definitions are equivalent, so it doesn't matter which one is used. Moreover, the fact that all three are equivalent is a very strong argument for the correctness of any one. Rosser 1939-225-226 Rosser's footnote number 5 references the work of 1. Church and Clean and their definition of lambda definability, in particular Church's use of it in his An Unsolvable Problem of Elementary Number Theory 1936, 2. Herbrand and Gödel and their use of recursion in particular Gödel's use in his famous paper on formally undecidable propositions of Principia Mathematica and related systems I 19 1931, and 3 post-1936 and Turing 1936-37 in their mechanism models of computation. Stephen C. Clean defined as his now famous thesis I, known as the Church-Turing thesis. But he did this in the following context boldface in original. 12. Algorithmic theories. In setting up a complete algorithmic theory, what we do is to describe a procedure, performable for each set of values of the independent variables, which procedure necessarily terminates and in such manner that from the outcome we can read a definite answer, yes, or no, to the question, is the predicate value true? Clean 1943-273. History after 1950 A number of efforts have been directed toward further refinement of the definition of algorithm. An activity is ongoing because of issues surrounding, in particular, foundations of mathematics especially the Church-Turing thesis and philosophy of mind especially arguments about artificial intelligence. For more, see algorithm characterizations. Topic. See also Topic. Notes Topic. Bibliography Topic. Further reading Topic. External links 
Hazewinkel, McKeel, ed. 2001, 1994. Algorithm. Encyclopedia of Mathematics, Springer Science plus Business Media BV. Kluwer Academic Publishers, ISBN 978-1-55608-010-4. Algorithms at Curly. Weistein, Eric W. Algorithm. Mathworld. Dictionary of Algorithms and Data Structures, National Institute of Standards and Technology Algorithm Repositories The Stony Brook Algorithm Repository, State University of New York at Stony Brook Collected Algorithms of the ACM, Association for Computing Machinery The Stanford Graphbase, Stanford University